Matrix completion is a central problem of recommendation systems, which are at the heart of the business of many huge companies of the web, including but not limited to Google, Facebook, Amazon, YouTube, and Netflix. In this video, I'll show you how the single value decomposition has turned out to be a powerful and very useful tool to solve this problem. Let's first describe the metric completion problem as posed in the Netflix prize. The data given by Netflix for the competition were entries of the form user, movie, date of rating, rating. Let's forget about the date of rating for today. What we're left with are ratings x, i, j in 0 to 5, where i is some user and j some movie. In other words, we are given entries of some metrics x. However, the data we are given do not allow to fill the matrix. In fact, they typically represent 1% of all the data in the matrix. The matrix completion problem is the problem of filling the blanks. More formally, we are thus searching for a matrix M, which coincides with the xijs that we know of. So let's define omega to be the set of pairs ij whose rating we know and let's call p of omega m and p omega x the matrices obtained by cancelling all entries m i prime j prime and x i prime j prime for which i prime j prime does not belong to omega. The difference p omega m minus p omega x is then a measure of the difference between the matrix M and the data we were given. Now, if we wanted the matrix M to perfectly match the matrix X for known entries, we'd impose the difference to be zero. However, real data are always noisy. You should never demand perfect fitting of the data, since this would likely lead to overfitting, and overfitting is bad. So instead, we'll want to minimize some norm of the difference. What a lot of machine learning researchers do is minimizing the Frobenius norm, also known as the Euclidean norm for matrices, which is simply the square root of the sum of the squares of the entries. Okay, this is easy to do. But there's something else that we'll want our matrix M to be. We want it to be redundant as much as possible. This is because it's natural to assume that many users are very similar and that many movies are similar. In technical terms, this corresponds to demanding the matrix M to be of low rank. Eventually, we thus obtain the following minimization program. We want to minimize a trade-off between how similar M is to the known data and the rank of the matrix M. The trouble is that this is a difficult problem, and this is because the rank of the matrix is a very discrete and combinatorial measure of the matrix. In fact, the problem here is provably difficult. It is an NP-hard problem. To render the problem tractable in practice, one solution is to get rid of the rank and to replace it with something similar to the rank. And that's where SVD kicks in. It turns out that the vector of singular values of the matrix M is a great indicator of the rank of the matrix. To be more precise, the rank of the matrix is the number of non-zero singular values of M, which is sometimes called the zero norm of the vector of singular values, even though the zero norm is not actually a norm. What we'll do is to replace the zero norm of the vector of singular values by a one norm, which is much more tractable computationally. This is not so different from the lasso regression, where the one norm of the coefficients of the linear regression is penalized, even though what we would actually kind of like to minimize is rather the zero norm of these coefficients. In any case, the one norm of the vector of singular values of the matrix M is called the nucleus norm of M. Given this, we finally have a much more tractable version of our optimization problem. We'll want to minimize a trade-off between the Frobenius norm of the difference between our matrix completion and the available data and the nucleus norm of our matrix completion. Now, this is a much easier optimization problem but it's still too hard to be solved in practice, especially 
given the size of the matrices of the Netflix price, which are typically 400,000 by 20,000. This represents nearly billions of entries. Faster heuristic algorithms are then typically used to obtain good solutions to this optimization problem. And that, plus a lot more ideas and work, is how you could have won $1 million by playing around with Netflix data.